Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Lisa. I just wanted to come on here and reread out the words to his beloved bride that was given to Jeffrey Stewart. I shared all of these seven months ago, but the volume was very low had I not had a headset back then. So I am going to reread these words out for all of you. It is such an encouraging word from our Heavenly Father to us, His children. And now with having the headset, it will be much easier to hear the words than it was before. So this is what the word says. What my people mean to me. Our Heavenly Father says, It is impossible for you to grasp how much I love you. Even after you get your new bodies, you will not be able to comprehend even a small fraction of its depth. For millions of years, you will wonder at the depth of my love for you. My care for you is infinite. When you hurt, I hurt. When you rejoice, I rejoice. The mention of your name causes such overwhelming love that I would die for you again if you needed it. The vastness of the universe can fit inside my heart, yet the vastness is nothing compared to the love I have for each of my children. Creation was my gift to you. Every good thing you see is my gift to you. My son is my gift to you. You are that pearl of great price that I would give everything to possess. My only thoughts of you are thoughts of your good. The smallest details of your life have been planned with infinite care. Every single flower, every single sunset, every single day is my gift to you. You believe heaven will be a place of great joy, but you being with me in heaven brings me joy that is beyond what you can comprehend you make heaven, heaven for me. So never doubt my love for you. Though the enemy come against you and things look dark, the sun always shines and my love always shines for you. The three keys to walking in the fullness of sonship. The father says, I want my people to know that there is so much more to walking with me than is commonly taught. You have been taught to expect a certain degree of things from me, from your walk with me. You have been taught that you grow to a certain point, then pass away and spend eternity with me. Your time with me in eternity started when you accepted my son Jesus as Savior and Lord. Right now... You are seated with me in heaven. This is where you are now. Ephesians 2 verse 6 That very fact should radically change your life, but most of my children operate the same as they did before they were placed next to me. They pray, yes, but the unsaved also pray. They read my word, but the unsaved also read my word. I am calling you to a higher walk that is available to all my children. People look at Wigglesworth and think that he is special. The only thing he did special was say yes to me and go through the door into full sonship, the door that any of my children can walk through if they simply do so. It is so beautiful beyond that door. Joy made full lives beyond that door. Life and that more abundantly lives beyond that door. Walking in the same intimate walk I had with my son Jesus when he walked the earth lies beyond that door. So come on into the land I set aside for you before I created the world where you have always wanted to linger, to walk in and explore. Take my hand and let me show you just what it means to be a son of God. The Father says, The first key. 
Revelation is reading the word through my eyes. When you read my word through man's eyes, you will continue to walk as men. When you read my word through my eyes, you begin to walk as sons of God. This is possible for you, since we are one spirit. Ask me to help you do this, and I will. The second key. My word was never meant to read only silently, but mainly aloud. The word meditate in Joshua 1 verse 8 and Psalms 1 verse 2 means speak, mutter, utter to yourself. You are supposed to educate both your mind and your spirit. You educate your mind primarily by what you see. You educate your spirit primarily what you hear. You teach your mind what to think by what you see. You teach your heart what to believe by what you hear. Reading my word aloud, then, is the best way to renew your mind and growth in faith at the same time. The third key. Wigglesworth is an example of a person who walked in full sonship. The Lord says, Many believed I was able to do so many mighty miracles through him, because he was baptized in the Spirit. This is not true. Many are baptized in my Spirit, yet see no miracles. That is because Wigglesworth walked not only full of my Spirit, but also full of my Word. He would pray in the Spirit daily, and read aloud from my Word daily. That is why I was able to raise so many from the dead. Through him and restore missing limbs, and so many other mighty miracles. These are the keys to walking in full sonship. This is the revelation that causes the prophecy of the manifestation of my sons, in Romans 8.19, to be fulfilled in this season. Comments he gave to add, The sower soweth the word, when you read his word aloud, you are being your own sower. Plant his seeds in the garden of your heart every day so that you will grow a garden in your heart that will make you begin looking, walking, and talking like Jesus. Another benefit of doing this is that the seeds that the enemy has planted, such as seeds that block healing, seeds of making you fear rejection by the Lord, and others will be replaced by seeds of faith for healing and a new sense of total acceptance by the Lord and boldness to go forth and do His will as you have never known. There are so many false teachings about healing and other subjects. That is the real reason why some, even very very godly, spirit-filled people have had issues receiving healing from the Lord, bad seeds planted in their hearts when they were not looking by some pastor or teacher they listened to thirty years ago in the garden of their hearts in some forgotten corner is a weed that the enemy planted, that thing that made them just seem to never be able to step out into faith and receive the wonderful gift of healing from their loving Father, purchased at such a great price by His precious Son. Reading the pure word of God aloud will uproot those foul weeds from the enemy and replace them by a plant of growing faith to receive the wonderful things their precious Father wants to give His precious children. The bad seed entered by something heard, so it must be uprooted by something also heard. This revelation, a major part of the awakening. The awakening has started, the greatest move of God to ever occur on earth. Awakening is actually a misnomer. It is multiple awakenings, all at the same time. An awakening to who He is an awakening to all he did for us on the cross, an awakening of who we are now as his sons 
who are seated with him in the heavenly realms and awakening to who Jesus is in us and who we are in him and an awakening to who we are to the enemy. All these awakenings coming together will lead to a radical transformation of his bride and to the greatest incoming of souls that the church has ever known, then his return. Lord Jesus says, I am the beginning and the end. I, the Word, started the church, and I, the Word, will complete the church. That is why I am revealing the message that you should not only be full of my spirit, but also my word. It is, the, it is this message about my word that will transform my bride into the glorious bride. The word of God is alive. Hebrews 4 verse 12 for the word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life, soul, and the immortal, spirit, and of joints and marrow, of the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and sifting, and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. The Word of God can live through you. God's Word is alive. When you fill your heart with His Word by meditating on it in the Hebrew sense of the Word, which according to Strong's Dictionary means to not just think about, but say aloud, as in mutter, utter, Say to yourself as his spirit directs during your times with him and throughout the day as he instructed Joshua, God's word, which is alive, will begin to live in and through you, walk and talk through you, and do the exact same things through you that you saw the word Jesus do in the Gospels such as command a fig tree to dry up, or command a man like Lazarus, dead four days in a tomb, to come back to life. He is showing his bride how to make herself ready. Okay, now I'm going to continue on in the next video, so I will stop it here and come with part two. See you in the next video.